Here she is. Casey, what's up? Hey, how's it going? It's going all right. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. What is uh, Star-Lord? Star-Lord? That's uh, Guardians of the Galaxy? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's like the main character. Oh, you said um, Danny's the... the yeah, Danny is the inspiration <laughs> for Star-Lord. Star yeah. All right, fair enough. <laughs> so... We got some uh, some fans already, it looks like. Um, people are tuning in and, and saying what's up. Uh, I have a basic understanding of Einstein's theory of relativity, uh, and I don't understand it in full. Well, Maybe. I'll see if I can get you on that one. I don't know, Casey, do you, do you have anything on the Einstein's theory of relativity? I got nothing, e man. <laughs> e equals mc squared, right? I think. Yeah. Um, so, all right, Casey, so I gave your, your background. Um, how about we just get into it, and then if anybody tuning in has any questions, make sure you guys ask those questions. Casey, like I said, is an amazing individual, wealth of knowledge, uh, just a good person all around. So why don't we start from the genesis? Um, what were you like as a high school student, and what led you to become a mechanical engineer? Um, so in high school, I'm the youngest of three girls, so I was pretty... It was pretty outgoing. I kind of had to be. It was like, you, you know, you got to fake it to make it with two older sisters, especially because yeah. one sister was super talented in like the theater, very, very outgoing. Also, um, just a super powerful, powerful lady. And my other sister is so smart and so kind. And that's what she was known for. So I kind of had to make my own, make my own way. Um, just really outgoing. Um, I wasn't really into math and science in high school. Um, I was really good at physics, so I actually dropped my math classes in junior and senior year to take extra physics classes, which was kind of cool. Um, had to talk to my counselor in order to do that, but um, physics is just applied math, so um, saying I didn't want to do math was fine with them, and, and I had a really awesome physics teacher at Boise High School junior and senior year, and um, that kind of that kind of pushed me in the direction I ended up going. Um, both of my parents are engineers, so I didn't really want to be one in high school. Um, I played soccer, too, so that was kind of a big deal. Um, but, yeah, that was – high school, I was kind of goofy. <laughs> Very goofy. That, that didn't change, right? <laughs> no. I mean, <laughs> hopefully a little bit. <laughs> no, no. Well, it sounds like you got the best of both worlds from your sisters, and then uh, your parents had an influence, too, in terms of uh, maybe choosing to go down the engineering path. Um, do you remember the name of your teacher? Mr. Bellamy at, at Boise High. Um, Do you yeah. think he's still there? I, he is still there. And actually, him and Mr. Carlton, who passed away, I think, um, two years ago, were, like, instrumental in making me who I am. Mr. Carlton was – I wanted to be a history teacher. I did not want to be an engineer um, like my parents. I wanted to be anything but that. Um, so Mr. Carlton kind of gave me that love for history. Mm -hmm. Um so he was definitely a, a force in that, for sure. That, that's awesome. That's interesting. I, I think uh, I, I did not like history at all when I was in high school. And I was more of like, I was more inclined to go towards math and engineering. Mm -hmm. So I went to college and then I ended up becoming a history major. So role reversal there. But That's uh, awesome. I didn't know yeah. you were a history major. I love that. So is, so is Danny. Yeah, I, I like to discuss this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, all right, so you're getting some love already for being a soccer physics queen. Um, hey, Bella. <laughs> what, uh, what was the journey like from high school to then becoming a, a mechanical engineer in college at uh, University of Idaho? So it was actually, I don't know if you know this, Noe, but um, so it was actually kind of interesting because I played soccer at Cal State Monterey Bay my first semester of freshman year. Um, so I really wanted to play soccer. Soccer was my life. It was um, my, my club team in Boise was, you know, a big deal. We we played really hard. Um, we ended up finishing like ninth in the nation or something Whoa. my last year. Um, yeah, so we went, we traveled a lot. We played hard. Um, so I went to Cal State Monterey Bay, played soccer there for the first semester, realized I wasn't going to be playing pro, <laughs> which I'm sure my parents already knew. Um and so I quit soccer, went down to San Diego, um, where my parents were living at the time, um, and I started coaching soccer, did a cheap semester at um, Mesa College in San Diego, and then I came back to Boise for a year at BSU, lived at my parents' house here in Boise, um, cheap rent, it was great, yeah, yeah. Um, 
And then I decided to, well, while coaching, actually coaching youth soccer. So then I transferred up to U of I um, and decided to be an engineer at that point. So I'd already had two years of college under my belt before I decided what I wanted to be. Um, It was definitely me trying not to be an engineer that led me to being an engineer. So. That's interesting. Was it was it part of like kind of figuring out what you don't like and what what you do like, or how how did that shape out? Or what you're good at? Um, I think too, it was it was not necessarily what I was super passionate about. At the same time, I was really good at it, and it was. Um, I mean, it definitely took a lot of work. Like engineering is hard, um, and but it was something I could I could sink my teeth into and yeah. um, and kind of push myself to be passionate about it. I have a theory when it comes to jobs that um, I can do anything as long as I'm working with people I like. And so when I got into engineering school, I found that group that I could just like link up with and work problems and have fun. Um, And that's, that's kind of like how I've viewed every job I've had, whether it's mowing lawns or HP. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, th- I think you got to give yourself some credit too, though. I think you probably, your personality maybe attracts uh, some, some positive uh, coworkers, you know? I, I hope you so. Have, yeah, you, I hope you so. You have a pretty gregarious personality, I would say. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I try hard to not be, you know, full of BS and I am, I'm, I take everyone at face value and I give yeah. people face value. That's definitely my my uh, approach to life that's awesome and i i i don't want to miss this opportunity to ask this question because we've had so buck the quo we get a lot of questions teens will will text hey how do i do this or i'm interested in this and one of the questions that has come up in the past is is teens that are in high school are interested in going into playing college sports what was that process like because i i feel like that's a that would be a good opportunity to maybe just cover that a little Yeah, so I actually had some opportunities to play um, college soccer in, um, like, for example, at an NAIA school in in Ohio called Oberlin. It's a fantastic school. Mm -hmm. I visited there. The coach wanted me. It was awesome. But because it was NAIA, I was like, "Mm, no, I kind of thumbed my nose at it. But um, I... I mean, you can't, you can't regret what choices you've made in life because they get you where you are today. And I love where I am today. But... um, that was a that would have been a great opportunity. So I think if you know wanting to play college sports is really you know looking at the schools you want to go to, but also looking at schools that might not be your first choice, but may have the program that you want, like good coaches or a great area or um, you know an area of study that you're interested in, that type of thing. And approaching those coaches, I mean, we did a lot of emailing. I, I'm starting to get back into the soccer scene now. I'm actually, I just got appointed the assistant girls um, coach at Boise High School, which is really cool. Come come in full circle. Um, Yeah, but I, so I don't really know how the the college recruiting game goes, but I'm sure like Idaho players like email those coaches, you Mm. know, watch their games, tell them what you like, tell them how you think you could impact them. It's almost like getting a job. Like you have to be able to sell yourself in that sense. Oh, okay. So maybe to Easton's question that we have here about getting a scholarship through weightlifting, um, maybe even working with a coach. If you're currently in high school, Easton, maybe contact that coach that you have there at high school that is connected to, to weightlifting. And then if Idaho State has an athletics department, which they do, uh, contact them. And there could be an opportunity. It's, it's one of those, um, I'm a big proponent of shooting your shot. And that's why I like sure. even asking your question right now, Easton, you know, if you don't, if you don't ask, you may not get the answer to it. So uh, we might not have a definite answer to it, but, you know, keep, keep asking. Um, yeah. And on that too, no way it's um, like for Idaho state, I mean, find out when their open tryout is. I walked on at Cal state Monterey Bay. I wasn't recruited. Um, my middle sister, she walked on at Cornell um, I mean, Ooh. that's an Ivy League school, and she went and walked on, like, and played. I mean, she was, that's awesome. So find, make contact with that coach. Have your coaches in your high school contact the coaches for you um, and get out there to tryouts. Get out there to the competitions. Meet people. Try and network. Um, you know, link up with somebody that might be able to also get you connected. 
Yeah. Great, great question. And thanks, thanks for uh, providing that insight. Um, Easton, uh, reach out to me in the DMs. I'll send you some swag. All right, buddy. Um, so Casey, I, to make this come around full circle, you know, trying something that maybe you didn't know that you would uh, accomplish or maybe get um, brought on a team for and how you, you know, ended up with uh, mechanical engineering, even though you didn't necessarily think that that was going to be your path, your trajectory, but you were just good at it, right? Maybe that's how your sister walked on at Cornell and how you walked on in uh, Cal State Monterey. Um, you were just good at it. Like, what do you think it was? Because I know you mentioned something about wanting to tinker. Do you think their yeah. personality and something that was almost inherent in you was, was what led you to go into engineering? Yeah, for sure. I I don't think... I don't think being just good at it was ever really, I was never the star. I was never the star. I was, I mean, soccer is 11 people on the field, right? And I was probably like 14, 15 maybe to get in there. And um, so it wasn't, it wasn't a just good at it thing. And in engineering school, and I'm going to be totally honest, yeah. at University of Idaho, C's, C's were getting me degrees, right? Like it was, I was passing my math classes. I took calculus three times, but hmm. I'm, I'm persistent and I'm resilient and I work my tail off. And that's, that's something that I think has gotten me through soccer. It's gotten me through life. It's, I mean, it's, it's something that I learned within my family, um, with my grandparents working for them, just being resilient and pushing through like hardships. I, I didn't make the, I didn't make, I never played varsity at Boise High School. I did not make soccer as a senior, um, and my response to that was I joined a rec team, mm -hmm. and I trained with younger teams, and I pushed through that, and it sucked. It was horrible. It crushed my, like, social life my senior year. It um, kind of crushed my soul for a little bit, but I learned a lot from it, and you grow and so it's yeah. really that it's that, it's that work ethic it's not the talent um yeah. for me it was never really talent I might I always say I'm not the smartest person in the room but I'm the hardest working which is not necessarily true because you never want to downplay yourself like that I learned a lot this last couple of years but yeah. um I'm the smartest at something different yeah Man, I love Bella. Bella's awesome. She, hey Bella, you know, uh, slide into the DMs too. We'll send you some some swag for uh, for being very involved in this. Um, and and Casey, you know, with with everything that you just mentioned right now, and I, I, I'm thinking about this right now with Dan. Dan and I were were talking about just stuff that's happening right now, um, and sometimes you you can't afford to waste a good struggle, right? Sometimes you're going to have a struggle, but you you can't waste that opportunity to grow and learn and and become just a better version of yourself um so i want to i want to just talk a little bit about your experience at hp what was that like so you were talking about you were persistent maybe c's were getting degrees but also you you worked hard to make it through the classes and understand the material that you needed to get um and then you you get out of out of college and then you go on to work for a pretty big company uh mm -hmm. hp and you were there for nine years. What was that experience like? I mean, maybe from the from the time that you went in. And so for everybody who's tuning in, uh, Casey isn't at HP anymore, but she was there for nine years. So what was the process like from you getting in there to your exit? Yeah. So when I, um, my last semester at University of Idaho, I um, told my professors, like, my goal at the end of this is to have a job before I graduate. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, you know, I was, I was putting out 75 resumes a month. Like it was, I was pushing hard to try and find something because my goal in life as uh, the third child in my family was to be financially independent. I yeah. really wanted my parents to be, um, in fact, my mom and I are like best friends. <laughs> so I wanted my parents to be able to have a relationship with me that wasn't monetarily dependent. Um, that was just my thing. It wasn't something they put on me. Um, so I was pumping those resumes out. I ended up with six interviews. I was putting out 75 resumes a month yeah. with, and I ended up with six interviews. Like yeah. 
that was a lot and ended up with two job offers out of that so it really became a it was a persistence thing a resilience yeah. thing and my parents actually met at HP I know that sounds really weird they um <laughs> they were not high level executives they were not managers of any sort so um actually what happened was I applied for this job at HP and my mom knew the administrative assistant um her name is Diane she is the most amazing woman on the planet she just graduated or she just um retired but my mom emails Diane and says hey Casey is applying for this job and my mom being the woman that she is um you know has great respect um from a lot of people because she just tells it as it is and um Diane printed out my resume and went and stuck it on the hiring manager's desk and said hire this girl um and they you know I went through eight hours of interviews it was yeah. hellish um it was I mean they were very technical so it's important to to make sure that if you know C's get degrees for sure sometimes but um I did graduate with like a 3.2 so it's not like I was yeah. I wasn't slacking by any yeah. means um you know I was I was busting my butt I was working three jobs while going to school um and and trying not to spend my parents money as much as possible or put myself in debt too much um but yeah so when I started at HP I was actually really bored um super duper bored I was I was really excited to be an engineer at that point and when I jumped in it was like super slow going um but then I I had to step back and kind of lean to my what can you enjoy what can you enjoy out of this and so it's really it's really about perspective I think a lot of times people hate stuff because their perspective is not in the right place um, and their expectations might not be in the right place. So I spent about six months hating my life and then I got over it and found something I loved. And through my nine years, it was actually that first six months that what I became known for at HP um, was happened within my first six months because I had a job I hated. Um, my manager made me cry because she, you know, gave me a talking to about mm -hmm. something that was not my responsibility. But then I decided I'd make it my responsibility. So I love a challenge. I love it when people tell me you can't do that. Yeah. And I, yeah. I, I'm wondering, cause as you're explaining this stuff, I, it almost seems like you have, so it's not so much I'm applying for the sake of applying. It's because you have an objective and your objective mm -hmm. is to be financially independent and also prove whether it's to yourself or to someone else that you can accomplish these things. And so that almost kind of also, played out at HP, you just gave this example of your boss that was kind of tough to work with. Mm -hmm. but, but I think even like the eight hours of interviewing the, the you know, um, making it through the, the first six months, or even just kind of realizing that, you know, you may not have the most friendly individuals that you're working with. You made that you made it through that trial and tribulation. And then you were able to make it nine years past that yeah. right and i ended up loving it like i mean i just saw my friend andy log on but it's i ended up loving my job i loved my second i mean i loved the the boss that i've been with for the bulk of the time he became like a dad uh i i loved working for him i would honestly like if he called me today and said come back to work i would really have a hard time saying no um you I moved on <laughs> I know I moved on to another job yeah um and it actually became really apparent after that that um that I you know that I really just needed to and and a lot of things fell in line yeah. um you know two little kids my kids are two and four um and in this last January is when I quit and it's not it has it's not a negative on HP at all it was actually just stuff fell in line if I'd been with my my boss Eric, I would not have been able to quit. Yeah, that's awesome. And Andy, you just gave you a little bit of love there. So uh, she's great. Uh, um, <laughs> so that transition. So so leaving uh, nine years, which is a big chunk of your life, um, and it's probably like the job that you had after after college. It is. Yeah. How was that move, and how? how was that moving that transition to what you're doing now? And, and cause you, you, 
you and Dan um, basically helped start um, there in Butler Memorial Foundation, right? Yeah. Could you talk talk through the process? So we'll transition from engineering to now going to the nonprofit world, starting a nonprofit, being in the management side of it, and then just the, I guess the the transition process. Yeah, yeah. So I don't think I don't think I can talk about that without touching on um, so on Danny's being injured. So yeah, um, Danny, and, my husband. Can I can I go for it? Or yeah, yeah. No, I was just gonna say okay, yeah. I was sorry. gonna give context to who Dan is, but yeah. Okay, so Danny's. I call him Danny. Um, no, he calls him Dan. Um, but he was um deployed to Afghanistan in 2017 and was in a building that exploded. Um, I was 34 weeks pregnant and my older son was a year and a half. Um, so it was a really kind of a very like crazy time. Yeah. We, um, you know, we dealt with the injury. I was still working full time. Um, I moved to the East Coast. Um, my wonderful boss let me work from the East Coast for a couple months until I went on maternity leave. And then when I came back, we were, you know, Danny came back as well. And we were, we were doing injury um, treatment type of stuff. So I was managing his care as well as doing my job as well as managing two children and a household. Um, so it was a lot. I felt like I was definitely keeping a lot of plates spinning all at once. Oh. I have you have you seen those people that spin plates on all those yeah. sticks? Half time at the Houston Rockets. Oh yeah. I saw yeah. that or I heard this great this great metaphor where like yeah. um women just well, I mean, I think everybody kinda does, but you keep your plate spinning. And if mm -hmm. you if you neglect a plate, it's gonna drop. So mm -hmm. you know, I was constantly keeping plates spinning. So I never I never really got a lot of like downtime so quitting quitting at hp um you know we'd gotten we'd gotten the treatment taken care of um you know getting things moving in the right direction um medically for my husband and then also like my kids growing up a little bit made things a lot easier um but yeah there were i mean there were some hard times but once once danny started working um with no <laughs> The, um, then it just be, kind of became apparent that I had been grinding for a really long time and I just needed a break. So when I did part with HP, I made sure to tell them, like, I just need a break. I just need some. I looked into different options. I looked into going possibly part time. That wasn't really a thing mm -hmm. at the moment. Um, or it, I mean, it could have been if I pushed a little harder, but my heart was really in the in the zone of like, take a little time off. Um and also the Aaron Butler Memorial Foundation um, and the Aaron Butler Memorial Purple Heart Run is something that was started by my husband and his um, good friend, Dan Magida. Um, and I was just helping in the background. And then once I quit, um, we started developing it as a 501c3 nonprofit. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's, it's, now I'm the secretary slash race administrator. I'm not doing as much because my focus is really on the kids. Um, but there were some growing pains there, kind of figuring out what my role would be. Um, but my husband and I are, we're teammates. I mean, we're yeah. like, he's my partner in life and he is my teammate. And um, I remember, sorry, funny, funny side note, but when, um, when my oldest was born and was a newborn, came home poop up the back I mean he was like poop in his hair and Danny's like oh my god we don't have x y and z and I'm like no no we do <laughs> he's like oh you're like the best team sergeant ever so you know we we definitely play off of each other and um I I couldn't imagine going through life with a with a better human so having having him as a partner is huge yeah. um so the the Butler Memorial Foundation is is definitely something I'm super passionate about um, and has really grown from from the injury and Aaron's death and and all of that. And I I was actually kind of curious to see how long we could go without talking about Dan in here, but oh, okay. <laughs> sorry, I love it. No, 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 I no, can't yeah, help I it. it. <laughs> I knew it was gonna happen, and if you didn't bring it up, I would have brought. I him. like him so much. I talk about him all the time. He's a good guy. <laughs> Don't tell uh, him I said that though, because he still right. can't. I'll, I'll, I'll tell him tomorrow morning that it was nothing but trash talk. Um, Perfect. So, <laughs> so making the, the, the transition from HP, which is a very kind of like a, I mean, 
corporate world to nonprofit. It's two different sides of the coin almost. Um, what do you think if you were to just talk about what do you think has helped you be successful? Because you've been pretty successful and I know that there is a learning curve to starting a nonprofit and, and even just getting your feet into it and helping it the the, the name grow and, and the, the purpose reach a further audience. Um, what do you think like in terms of your personality um, or that you've done that has helped you be successful in uh, all facets of your life, sports, uh, engineering, uh, nonprofit, maybe even being a mom? Yeah, I'm a really action oriented person. So when it comes to like soccer engineering, um, one of the things that my boss at HP loved was he could say, here's something I need you to do. And the next thing he knew it was done. And he didn't have to hear anything more about it. So, um, you know, and that's soccer too. Like my coach would say, I never had to be corrected in soccer because I always knew what I do it did wrong before before the coach could tell me I did it wrong. <laughs> um, yeah. I definitely I'm a I'm a self corrector. I'm probably I'm okay, not probably. I'm way more critical on myself than other people are. So when I do receive criticism, that's one of those faults that I, you know, I really, I definitely need to work on. That's a learning, a learning objective with working with, you know, people that you love and care about. Um, and something that you're really passionate about is that any type of criticism, you can't take it personally because it's, it's, um, you know, moving towards the objective. You, you just have to, you change your ways or figure out why, you know, why the criticism is happening in that way um but yeah I think I mean I've always been super persistent um I'm also like give me a job and I'll find a way um it it, it is um hard to hear no um I I think I learned a lot of lessons when when Danny was injured with um with like his medical team because at first it wasn't the right medical team um, and we had some people that weren't, um, you know, weren't beneficial to his his health. Um, and so being able to say, like, no, no, I'm in charge of this um, is not is not an easy thing to do, especially coming as a third kid where, like, I was never in charge. Um, <laughs> I was also never, like, the super talented one or things never came easy. But um, being able to step up and say you know, I'm Casey Nelson, and this is how it's going to be, mm. was, was a lesson I had to learn, um, you know, and I think when you, when you yes. stop, sorry, my dogs are barking, when you stop caring what people think about you in particular, but more care about the objective is when, is when magic starts to happen. Yeah. And uh, inquiring minds want to know if you're a Leo a Leo? I'm a, I'm a Taurus. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I don't know where that falls in the Zodiac I don't know either. world, but... Uh, I'm in April, I'm, but okay. I'm stubborn. I'm stubborn, and that's where my children get it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but it's... Uh, Casey, um, the, the tough part about this is that these go really quickly, yeah. and um, we don't have too much time. I did want to give a little bit of your personality to shine a little bit um i know you traveled a lot uh you've been to india you've been where else have you been i've been to india china japan and indonesia and were those and on I, personal trips traveling? Mm, i've only ever traveled out of the country on work trips oh so that was hp hp all hp which is really cool right on thanks which, uh, which one of those countries had your favorite food Oh gosh. Um, I love Japanese food. Um, my sister lived there. Um, no, my husband's January. Is that Sagittarius? Uh, Capricorn. Capricorn. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He was pretty stubborn too. Yeah. <laughs> so we have two stubborn kids. I wonder why. <laughs> um, no, Japanese food is the, is the best. Gyoza, um, oh, those little like fried dumplings. They're delicious. Mm -hmm. Um, tonkatsu my sister lived there um she was in the military and was stationed at um yokota air force base while i was traveling so i got to actually spend some time in kyoto 
and my sister is a fluent Japanese speaker, so we got to go to like a ryokan and do like gyoza and karaoke bars and Ooh. lots of fun stuff. So I really love Japan. I hope to take Danny and the kids someday. Dan yeah. Danny would be amazing in Japan. That'd be a sight. I I mean I was like a head <laughs> taller than most of the men there, and they yeah. were. There was a lot of strange looks for sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh let's see casey we got maybe time for one or two questions um unless anybody else is watching bella if you if you have any questions i i know that you, there's probably something on your mind that you want to know about casey um anybody else if you guys have any questions for casey feel free to ask um what would current casey say to a younger casey let's say high school casey I think I think I've already said it, but the one thing I would tell my younger self is stop caring what people think about you. Focus mm -hmm. on the objective. Because okay. I was so worried about making other people happy. And now it's in my, I'm 33. So it, being in my 30s, it's like, make yourself happy and do good things for the world. And that's my, that's my objective. Nice. And then Bella wants to know what's your, uh, I think, I think it's a question. Funny. What's funniest your funniest memory? Yeah. Oh gosh, Bella. Um, funniest memory. There's some funny ones, but I'd say in we were really into scaring people. So there's a few few memories that pop up where we were scaring people. One, um, my friends in high school. I went to the dentist. I came to school, or I came to like our fitness class late, and they were hiding in the locker room and jumped out at me while I was like hustling to get my shoes tied and they jumped out at me and I make this I make a lot of faces so I made this really horrendous like <sighs> kind of face <laughs> and screamed like a banshee um but it's not that's not the only time we've scared people like when so I was in at U of I and um actually joined uh Tridelta um because shout out Tridelts Tridelts Delta the what? Um, but I thought we snuck up on people on the sleeping porch with masks on, which is really frightening and awesome. So lots yeah. of, I I kind of enjoyed scaring people for a long time. So those are some of the funniest memories for sure. So I'll stay away from you uh, around Halloween. No, I don't do it anymore. I'm kind okay. of, <laughs> Danny doesn't like to be scared. So remember that. Yeah. Casey, uh, I'm gonna, I think I got time for one more question. Um, and again, this is amazing. Thank you for joining and helping answer these questions and just give in, input. I think a lot of people really appreciated it. And it, it looks like you have a lot of fans from everybody who, who tuned in. Um, what would you say, so you said advice to a younger Casey, if anybody's watching this and because this is gonna go up on YouTube, it's gonna go on Instagram um, and our website, what would you like to like what would you just like to say is is your parting words for anybody watching this um parting words i think would be whatever your dream is go get it and stay hungry because you never know where you know like maybe it's at the time financial security so go be an engineer and and then your next dream after you have kids is go be a mom and help people, you know, and that's, that's not what I thought I would be doing, but I always knew I wanted to help people. So yeah. it's stay hungry. Yeah. And you're definitely doing what you need to be doing because uh, I think, I think everybody appreciates having you around and well, uh, there, there's always going to be a spot for you. You're you so go. nice. No way. <laughs> Just keeping it real. Yeah. All right. Well, Casey, thank you again for joining us. And thanks for everybody that, that watched this. Um, we hope you guys got some great information and just learned a lot from Casey. Honestly, she's a wealth of knowledge. If you do have any questions after you see this, um, you can slide into the DMs, ask us that question, or just text us. We have a number 208-208. Um, just text the letters BTQ to that number. And then if anything that Casey uh, mentioned, um, whether it's about sports, whether it's about traveling to Japan, whether it's about uh, just working at HP, whatever it is, and maybe you guys want to ask that question, text those questions to me. Um, and for, I think, uh, Eason, I can't remember if somebody else had a question about E equals MC squared or the uh, 
law of relativity. I'll look it up. I'll get back to you if you have those questions. So, Casey. Good luck. Thank, yeah. I'll, I'll put it in uh, the best explanation I can make, which is probably not the best. So, yeah. Casey, again, thank you very much. Um, and uh, hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. And uh, everybody, thanks for tuning in. Thanks, Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.